just hope it's not the Hoosiers. This this will mark the halfway point of the Big Ten season. Eight games for both Michigan State and Indiana after this game. And it's been a big week in the Big Ten. We mentioned this game tonight, Purdue and Michigan tomorrow. And then another big game on Sunday. Yeah, the sunny side. Hey, Mike. Uh, Raph wants to know what's it like to do a game now that we have the three-pointer. <laughs> Is Branch McCracken still a coach at Indiana? Huh? Is Branch McCracken still a coach? You can only inbound in the front court in this league. Yeah, we've seen them at baseball parks before. They're they're, I think in San Diego we usually see them or L.A. I'm hoping it's overtime. Double overtime. They lead by example through meticulous planning and discipline. They make men out of boys. To them, defeat is not an option. College basketball has one general, Robert Montgomery Knight. In the first 20 years of his command, the Hoosiers overran their enemies with marine-like precision. Of late, Indiana has not been all they can be. After all, General Knight once led his men to perfection. Today, Bob Knight's Red Army marches onto a 94 by 47 wood battlefield. The invading enemy, the Gophers of Minnesota. Welcome to Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana, home of the Hoosiers, and they've had some good ones on this floor this year. They've beaten Michigan here, they've beaten Purdue here. Minnesota comes calling today. Hoosiers winning five in a row in conference play until they shot only 40% at Michigan State the other night. Bob Carpenter, Bill Raftery, and for the general, that winning streak, his longest in conference play in five years. So he's been under some fire, but he's producing right now as well. He's still in control. Uh, the last four years, Bob, 82 wins. The year before, 31, so they get 113 in the last five years. 12 straight NCAAs. Yesterday's practice, he broke Minnesota down. He's totally in charge. You better start saluting him. And knowing Bob Knight, he'll be moaning and complaining publicly about that Big Ten tournament, but he'll be plotting privately to win that affair up in Chicago. Now, speaking of tournament play, how about Clem Haskins and the Gophers in the Final Four for the first time last year? Some people felt that Clem did it with smoke and with mirrors to sneak them all the way through. Well, the reflection from that mirror is Sam Jacobson. He's the guy that they go to. They move him to the small forward spot. They're not as tough up front. They don't score as much up front. They're not as physical. So they need Sam to have a big game today. And while Indiana was in the process of winning five straight, Minnesota lost its first six conference games, but now they've won their last two. It's Minnesota and Indiana, an afternoon of Big Ten basketball. CBS Sports coverage of the road to the Final Four is sponsored by Chevrolet Trucks. 
the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. And by Nike. Uh, yeah, I'm on. If, if Bob is on. Bob is on. Yes, sir. How about the telly? Michael, how about a quick look at the telly? All right. Okay. I want. <laughs> All right. Leon, have a nice game. We're the only one that took care of our health. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. Yes, sir. Yeah, play by play. One, two, three, four. Sunny in Hoosier country today. Indiana 14 and 6. They're 5 and 3 in the Big Ten. And as usual, inside Assembly Hall, better than 17,000 are gathered. Club Haskins in his 12th year, finding that life after a Final Four can be most difficult. Quincy Lewis, outstanding 6'7 junior, can play some outstanding defense. He was a bench guy last year. He's a shooter and a scorer. Kyle Sandin down low. Sam Jacobson, everything revolves around him, though, offensively. Bob Knight's 27th year, 27 winning seasons in Bloomington, 612 wins. It's Charlie Miller getting a start today. He's only starting for the fourth time this year. The freshman, Luke Recker, one of the good-looking young players in all of college basketball. Can't wait to see him perform today. A proud favorite here, too. Andre Patterson at midcourt against Sandin. And Hightower threw the ball up, and Patterson won the tip. And Bob Carpenter, Minnesota, man -a man And you'll see some switching. Maybe not the first half, but I think you'll see some zone before the day's over. Nice look. Andre Patterson back door on a good look from Luke Recker. That's the thing about Recker. He's an outstanding player, but he makes the other guys around him look even better. He's great without the basketball. Patterson's so important to the morale of this team. He's got to score, not foul out. Look at this back screen and layup. Oh, Sandin contributes. Sam, the man, knocks it down. I just guess you have to call that chalkboard offense the first two times down the floor. Recker a little short with that one. And the outlet for Eric Harris. And when Indiana gets it to the foul line like Recker just did, they are difficult to defend. Nice back cut here again. That was Lewis. Ball was bounced a little behind him. And then Quincy kicks it out of bounds with the game's first turnover. It'll go back to the Hoosiers. Uh, the ability to screen. Look at this brush. And Sam gets to the 10. And usually he elevates and finishes strong. But they run great half-court sets. Minnesota. That was Kyle Sandin at the high post picking off two Hoosiers on that play. Well short. A.J. Guyton, but a foul. And Clem up. Presenting his case at Hightower. A little nickel dimer on the wrist. That's one in the playground. If you call it, you get a boot. Clem very relaxed, understands the difficulty of having young people. Chatted with him before the game. He's just hoping that they learn the next couple of weeks so that they can make a run. A.J. Guyton, Big Ten freshman of the year last season, a freshman All-American. Leading the Hoosiers at 16 a game. He had one of his lowest games of the year, though, at Michigan State the other night. Only nine points with one assist. Hoosiers could not hit in that ball game. They were out-rebounded by 18 and gave up 22 offensive rebounds to the Spartans in that game. Now, he's very important because he can penetrate, can find people for the spread three. Little post-up, Lewis. They come with a double and he takes it the other way. Vinci into the paint and Andre Patterson the rebound. He's pulling down six a game. Guyton looking for a chance to penetrate. There's that motion offense. Guyton way beyond the arc. He's shooting 41% out there. And now he's got three pointers in an Indiana record 22 consecutive game. Bob, they push and they get into early offense. Likewise here, nice look. Jacobson a no look at the clock, but he traveled after receiving the pass. I got a chance to chat with Sam Jacobson. He said he'd rather be the two, the shooting guard, 
but he realizes they get a little more athleticism in the lineup, and he can be tough, and they go zone early. 2-3. One misled me. <laughs> Michael Lewis running the Indiana offense. A lot of times when they run this motion, it's hard to tell the point guard from the two guard. They all share the different spots. Well, they're going to have to flash here now. This is the zone. They're going to have to get holes, overload when they can. Here comes the throw by Patterson. A lot of ball movement and bodies. Lewis for Miller. Shot clock at five. Patterson flashes out high. He has shot 16 three-pointers now this year. And as he is, 2-3, the job of the back people is to complete the sequence. I mean, the miss, good job by Minnesota, couldn't squeeze the apple. 2.05 in, Hoosiers by five, 7-2. Minnesota working on a two-game conference winning streak. And by the way, talk about Michigan State, so impressed with their team, their ability. Tom Izzo's guys are just knocking them dead out of the game. Guyton again. Front rim with the three. Kyle oh, and that will be a backcourt offensive foul. He was throwing elbows. Hold on. He looked like he was trying to step up in the cafeteria to a better position. <laughs> right here, he did the right thing with the rebound, but just be comfortable. I mean, don't try and discard. And I must say, Luke is very good with the theatrics. I mean, he knows how to get the body and then fake. Little Hollywood thespian in Wrecker. Swing to the wing for Miller. And I have to go cross court on occasion, too. Up and inside for Indiana on this possession. Wrecker forcing the left-hander. Eric Harris with the feed straight ahead for Lewis. And another travel by the Gophers. And Clem Haskins keeps looking at the official on the near side, Tom Clark, and say, hey, wait a minute, what about these receptions? I think he was a little more upset, too, by the give. I mean, you've got to be able to read ahead for the man passing the basketball. And Harris that time led him into traffic. Miller on a good look from Michael Lewis. Nice job getting it into the lane. Now, the difficulty now for Minnesota, if they're going to give up post position, and give the opportunity to drop step to the goal. Anytime there's penetration, anytime there's a post up, they're gonna have a lot of difficulty. Nice little look by Lewis, a guy that can fill it up. Great high school score. Now trying to run an offense for Bob Knight. Two fouls early for Kyle Sandin of Minnesota. That will hurt their inside game. Good Jacobson spin. does a 360 and kills it. Lingerie lingering. Get the janitor, he left them all out there. <laughs> Blocking foul at the other end. Now, you would not be able to do this on the dance floor with sawdust, Bob Carpenter. The ability to spin in traffic, the gamble topside. Woo! A lot of guys waving. He is a terrific offensive player. Loves the game. Of course, a camper early on in his career at Kem's little summer get-together. Yeah, he's leading the Big Ten in scoring. Jacobson at 22 a game. And Bobby had five 20s in a row before the last game, had 16, so he's on fire. Good look from Patterson into the paint. Michael Lewis has been very active so far. As the ball deflected away, the Hoosiers will throw it in with 19 on the shot clock. They're leading 9-4 early. And Jacobson with a nice little swipe. Nice look. Wrecker comes down with it. He was going to shoot that ball in the air. When he saw he didn't have a shot, he came down. Then there was too much traffic. Ooh, that was easy for the refs. Wow, out of control, Eric Harris. Well, you know you've done a poor job when all three referees agree. I mean, it's tough for man and wife to agree. But in there, now a little bit of a slide, but the bang-bang effect at some point, pick up, jump stop, and kick. Eric, two mistakes early. He's a real solid performer out of St. Raymond's in the Bronx. That was A.J. Guyton taking the charge. Here's the straight-up man-to-man again. Anderson, cut off of the baseline by Miles Tarver, who's in there spelling Sandin. And the big fellas are accumulating some fouls early for the Gophers. That'll be Tarver's first. Now that's a disadvantage, I think, to Clem. They're more in the face. I mean, last year they could be physical, but they get after you defensively. If you're going to call the small change in McCrory's basement, he's in for a long night. You can't put the Hoosiers on the foul line. Guyton to the baseline. Wrecker swings it for Lewis. Falling down on the play, Tarver. That made it easy for Patterson to get up there and then have some good Minnesota help. How about Quincy Bob? 
I mean, he leads this team in blocks. I mean, he's a little guy. But you like to see that nature of Patterson being aggressive, challenging the 10. Got clock at 25. They got plenty of time to work it here. Fun to watch Jacobson and Record, two talented guys. And one thing Bob Knight wanted from Recker was continual motion. Keep Jacobson active. Quick start by the Hoosiers offensively. We've been grinding for about two minutes here. It's 9-4 Indiana. A rather shocking development at the timeout call. Clem Haskins, two technicals, ejected by Tom O'Neill, the official. Walks right through your screen there. And Clem stuck around for a while, Bill Raftery. He did not want to leave. He was upset at the number of fouls, the, the type of fouls as Bill Brown tries to control him. A very gentle guy. He knows if he doesn't have the maneuverability with the hands and the banging, it's to his disadvantage. I'm surprised. Oh, he is highly upset. I'm shocked. And it, Tom O'Neill's the one that called the second one, and I don't blame him. And that, that's more of frustration. There's nothing he can do now until it's all over. Discuss it with the commissioner of the Big Ten. It, it's just a difficult situation when you're expressing yourself. I think one technical is Bobby Jones takes over, former Pitt assistant. Very well thought of. I mean, I'm sure he's shocked to be in this position this early. Meanwhile, Indiana puts an 86% shooter, Michael Lewis, at the line. He's 55 out of 63 this year with those four in a row. And the Hoosiers open up a nine-point lead. Clem Haskins coaches a total of four minutes and one second in now, this game. I played here years ago, and I'll tell you what, I wouldn't mind getting thrown out. So lose him by 40. I don't think he expected that, but I know that will be talking to him. Make sure her man is doing okay. I mean, that's a tough thing. I think ref's got to look the other way after the first one. Particularly a gentle guy like that. I think a look, good look for record. Yeah, Andre Patterson, nice job of distributing that ball across the baseline. 15 for Hoosiers, and the Gophers are in a huge hole very early in this game. Run their sets, it's key. See what Indiana's going to do on their double screens, their post up. Are they going to trap? Here's a trap and a dive by Clark. Jacobson flashes out high. Tarver picks off his man. They've got to be patient. That's the one thing. Don't try and rush it. It's nice cut here by Sam. Give and go, too strong. Rebound, Michael Lewis. Three on four, Gophers did a nice job of getting back, and that forces Charlie Miller to step on the baseline. Now, you just mentioned something. The biggest concern when you play Indiana, 
They're going to push. I mean, it's not Indiana as people thought of it years ago where they were a little more patient. They're going to push, but they make good decisions, and now they've got an early setup offensively. Your big people have to sprint and get in position. Minnesota club having trouble scoring lately. Shooting 43% on the year. Only 29% from long range, so you don't like their chances if they have to make the big comeback. They got to die. Harris spread, spreads out. They get the little small change by Wrecker. We mentioned Indiana shooting poorly against Michigan State the other night. They started 40% today. The Hoosiers had shot 50% for nine straight halves before the Spartans got in their face the other night. Harris, the choreographer, he's going to have to get everybody in the right spot. Lewis, tough catch, nice shot. Nice set up, but not a bad choice. Kiss on the box. There's a guy playing hurt. Both ankles sprained, a thumb injury suffered late December. Quincy not feeling good. And he gets out there, but he's out there every game. And they're hoping that nice cut, nice dive. Oh, Miller, time. And no celebration, but that gut was wide open. Well, Michael Lewis really doing a lot of things for the Indiana offense so far. He's the man joining Eric Harris out on the perimeter. And the three-quarter just not far enough away. I mean, you got to distance yourself, don't get a body. But here's the 2-3 you're going to see right in the middle area there. Great cut, the ability to convert in the lane. You've got to have the guard slide down, take away that passing lane. In the zone, if anything, you're going to permit the deep jumper. Well, speaking of generals, we now have a former Air Force guy in the game. Mm -hmm. Kevin Nathaniel, the 21-year-old freshman formerly playing at Lackland Air Force Base, checks in to give Sam Jacobson a breather. All Air Force, they get the bang, they get a walk here as Patterson presented himself. Clark takes the hit. That's at least the third traveling call on Minnesota. And Bobby, Six minutes in, they're down by 11. Bobby wouldn't have had breakfast today if he knew this was going to happen. Jones, that is. Taking over for the man. One, three, one, look, Angles jumpers. Right now, one for three from three-point range, but record distributes for Charlie Miller. Let's see the shape of the zone now. You're going to be able to get the slot jumper, baseline looks. Record can't shoot him out of it. Kevin Clark with the rebound. Straight ahead, tough pass for Lewis. Trying to catch that ball over his right shoulder with three Hoosiers converging. Not a good decision either. That's the third time that Minnesota's done that in the open floor. Archambeau, a guy that can fill it up a little bit, comes in now, settle him down. But this is the kind of pass you can't make against a good basketball team. Great recovery by Indiana. Part of the tradition of great balance. They don't let you run and get easy ones. William Gladden is top of your screen defending their number 30. Now he's in the middle. The former JC All-American checks in for Bob Knight. And he's got to be solid. They feel he can do some nice duck in here. Not good deep on Wrecker. Lewis from Tarver. Wrecker will get killed if he lets that duck in occur. Gophers within nine. See, typically, Archambault, you can elevate for a jumper on his side. I mean, he just can't cover. Here's Tarver. They had him, excuse me, but they had him on the baseline the last time I saw that. And an Indiana try. Minnesota played good defense for 22 seconds on that possession. Sam Jacobson will now check back in after the Hoosiers' third turnover. Sam will replace Quincy Lewis. Uh, this is uh, the experienced guys now, Lewis, Jacobson, and Harris, that have to settle this team down. You're a little shell-shocked as a player when the head coach is dismissed, particularly a guy that influences and is a part of their philosophy tone. And it's the stuff he runs, a lot of pro stuff emanates from his playing days. They need him. So now the older guys have to be comfortable and help Bobby Jones. There's our Shambo. Three won't go. He was really open. We've got a foul on the rebound. Looks like Charlie Miller. Well, there shouldn't be much of a problem making the transition to Bobby Jones. He played at Western Kentucky for Clem, mm -hmm. embraces a lot of Clem's principles. Bob Knight, Ohio State, class of 62. After six years at Army, he's done the great job here. I remember watching or hearing about him when I was in kindergarten. Oh, man. You better hope he doesn't see this tape. He had gray hair in 62. Nice penetration by the high-flying Air Force. There. 
Nathaniel. Kevin Nathaniel, and now the Gophers back to within seven. They've gathered themselves very well here. And it's the zone that's got them back in, is influencing the offense of Indiana. Miller Long, big rebound. rebound. Jacobson, and a foul by Gladness. Ooh, they're going the other way, and I think you oh, had it right. Off. He pushed off, they said. I think you had it right. Now, that's the frustration. Sam Jacobson come over to Bobby Jones just a little bit upset at that call. I think you're right. You can see Gladness now as he, well, maybe the arm too, right? Mm. That was a long rebound, though. Yeah, that's what usually happens. The, the long bounce. Front end missed. Controlled by Ricker. Now he didn't have to go. Now that's not a good judgment by a talented guy. Be patient, kick it around, set some offense. And you think the technicals influenced this? It was 8 zip, Bob. Now it's 8 4. Quincy Lewis, a brief breather. And then Kevin Nathaniel came off the bench to get a basket. We'll sit down. And the difficulty when you're thrown out of a game, speaking from some experience, <laughs> uh, it's, it's like an embarrassment at first. You know, that you're down there to coach, and all of a sudden they take that away from you. It's such a tough weapon, a quick bang bang technical. I've always been an advocate for three, to believe it or not, because you get the first. Guyton. Off the quick catch, his second three of the day, A.J. with eight. You finish that though, you get the first, and immediately you react, all of a sudden you're out of the game. That early push gets Indiana into a flow. 2010 Hoosiers, 40% of their points coming from A.J. Guyton. Archambeau just leveled his man. Talk about your moving screen, he stepped right into Michael Lewis. Tough little guy. He's smiling, he enjoyed that little pick. And the little presentation and the lean in. I mean, that's uh, that should be played across the street at the wow. football stadium. Well, the team's still on the floor. Eight and a half minutes in. We're in timeout territory for that under 12 minute timeout, but they'll go ahead and shoot at the other end. Michael Lewis at the line, Indiana's best free throw guy. He misses one. He's uncomfortable with people on the line. <laughs> so many technicals with the floor. Likes to be out there all alone, huh? You know, the road is funny. They, talking about Minnesota, they came down, won that overtime game here last year. I think they gave them great confidence towards that run. That they could win on the road gave them some toughness. 21-10 Indiana. The big story after four minutes and one second. Club Haskins ejected. <laughs> It's interesting that Bobby Jones is in his first year at Minnesota, but he knows Clem so well with Ralph Willard at Pitt the last couple of years. At Western Kentucky, he scored 1,211 points. Number 21 on their all-time list, so maybe they can get some offense with him over there. Well, he knew how to play. He got the Ed Diddle Award, famous coach at Western Kentucky. Very well thought of by Ralph Willard. Now, great adjustment by Indiana. Same play they opened the game with. They stifled it, stuffed it off. That was Gladness collapsing down the paint for the defensive play. And then Wrecker looking right at Jimenez, not able to make the easy pass. And at the end of today's game, we'll select the shift of funds of America's colleges and universities. Well, you got to guard if you play for Indiana. They just read, there's the trap, and now they zone up. Now, see that force? Simply Clark. because you don't read the free man. Clark was not free. I'm not sure if Kevin was even looking for the pass. Hit him in the back of his shoulder. 
nearing the 10 minute mark. Hoosiers by 11. Luke Jimmon is in the game, can stroke it from outside. What a great story he is. Just wanted him the worst way to play at Indiana. Came on as a walk on, earned a scholarship last year. His dad was his high school head coach. Wrecker has that one tipped away, but they're going to say he last touched it. Tom O'Neill with the call on the far side. Good defense by Quincy Lewis and six Indiana turnovers. Better job reacting. That hole was open earlier. Good close by Minnesota. Here's a little dive to the box. Screen down on this nice little pick here. Clark, nice penetration, can't finish. Gladness rips down the rebound. He's averaging five a game. That's everything, but you got to knock that one down when you get to the rim like that. And Kevin, pretty good getting to the 10. Wrecker playing with a lot more savvy than most freshmen do. That ball taken right away from Guyton. Here come the Gophers, three on three. Clark in the middle, kicks to Jacobson. He was on the line, so that's a two for Sam, and he has a half dozen. Great job spacing out, though. He created a passing lane. Good kick. For three, Guyton. Well, you got to move it around a little bit, I think. That was a settle. AJ's missed three of his last four from out there. Harris off. Jacobson gets a touch. Clark, the loose ball. Wilson rips it down. Wow, we see a big time snatch. And they need him every day. I mean, that's their big inside guy. Three rebounds for Andre. I, you know, I believe he's just such a nice guy. I mean, he's a little bit turned that temperament during the game. He's got some talent. Good open shooter. He can hit it from outside. And, uh, baby, Andre, give it to him. As I mentioned earlier, he's taken 16 three-pointers this year, and he's hit six of them. Indiana now back up by 11. We're nearing the 850 mark first half. And this is a team defensively you can dribble drive against Indiana. I think they got a tough shot here. Jacobson. <laughs> well, he knows he's got to step up. He's got a lead. 1,425 points in his career. Number nine all time in Minneapolis. He's on a pace to crack that top five before he's done. Well, he is playing terrific here, Sam Jacobson. Feeling his way down the middle. The kick for Harris. And the three goes down, and here come the Gophers. And this is the Clem personality coming out. I mean, they feel they've been had early, stepping up, shown a lot in the ticker category. Back to within six, nearly a steal. Wrecker comes up with it. He lays it home. Oh, does he have great control? The left hand, you've got to use both in a Big Ten or any level of this stature. Boy, did he pick apart the zone? Nothing there. Sam Jacobson is exhausted. Minnesota needs a 20-second timeout. It comes with eight minutes remaining. I think Sam looked over to Bobby Jones as a coach. I gotta have a blow right here. I can't even run down the court. I'll tell you, that particular play, he never broke his guy down at all. I mean, he was at a disadvantage still with great strength. I think he's got a big upside when you're thinking of the NBA. His strength, he's got good legs, good elevation, he can face the basket, and really showing a little bit right now. Well, Tiger, no. So, Earl better step up and get some of those strokes working for him. That's pressure. That is pressure. And the deuce. The Quincy Lewis with a half dozen. Back to six again are the Gophers. But from the left side, just checking in, Rob Turner knocking it down. The junior out of Tyler in Texas, played some Juco ball last year. Well, the seniors have to play, and Lewis Beeney Jr. has got to contribute. They know just in the leadership category. I don't think that Kevin Nathaniel shot was what Bobby Jones was looking for. And Bobby's going to give him the hook, too. He's just looking at Harris on the bench. Jacobson getting a breather here. Jimenez out top with Guyton. See, this 2-3 eliminates the post guy, but it's the flash right there that makes it tough. What a look. Oh, it says now the defense faces the man in the lane and it opens up the passing lane. What a great basket by Indiana. Jimenez to Turner to Gladness for the finish. A little curl here by Lewis and Gladness gets his hand caught plus the foul. William Gladness with his first. Timeout in Bloomington. 6.45 first half. Hoosiers back up by 10. Minnesota still fighting.
I saw Eddie Heights out before the game. He says, hey, tell Rap. I told O'Neal to avoid the ticky tacks. Oh, really? Back here in Bloomington. Interesting afternoon so far. Bob Knights, Tepper legendary, but Clem Haskins loses it a bit. He's the one that's gone. Here's our game summary with Indiana up by 10. Both teams shooting pretty well right now. Minnesota recovering very nicely since the coach has departed. I asked Clem before the game, how is Clement on the sideline? So she's young, a little aggressive. I said, well, you're mature. And under control, understated, but I think things changed a little now. They're calling some favorable ones for Minnesota. So even though Clem's not here, a little bit of an influence. And Kyle Sandin, who had two early fouls, is back in there playing the post. It rims out for Lewis, rebound William Gladness. His fourth of the day, that's not bad coming off the bench. Bob Carpenter, Bill Raftery, Assembly Hall, Bloomington. And this plays well. This is a better Indiana team. Just a little rotation. Trying to get Richardson into the game a little bit. Larry, number 33, the box screening gladness. Shot clock under 10. Guyton for Jimenez. Behind the arc, and he drills it. And he knew where to go. That gap, two defenders. Neither one made a decision to get out on him. Like, Got to like the way Lou picks his spots. Eight for 20 in threes this year. And Guyton got it to him. Hoosiers back up by 13. Now they get the steal. Gladness to Jimenez. Rifles one at the knees of Guyton. AJ, tough catch. It'll stay with Indiana there. I'm not so sure. Jimenez with a tough look, as you mentioned, a pretty good catch, but it's all set up on this end. The front is stepping across. Gladness under total control. That's great post defense by the big guy. Jimenez to trigger it in. That's Turner with a look for Jimenez. Oh, Nobody got it. Bob Carpenter in your head there. You wouldn't have been able to make that one. Oh, the cut, the breakdown of the defense. The 2 3 has been favorable. The 1 3 1 has given them some problems. Yeah, that Minnesota, time. that is, I mean. No help at all that time. Running down to the five minute mark. Hoosiers by 15. This is an important sequence for the Gophers right now. They could use the three, but Clark can't hit it. And the rebound by A.J. Guyton. I think they're. They're going to have to get Sam away from the box, I think. They're trapping. He's not in the game. He's got to play outside a little bit. Tough pass for Indiana to handle. It was Richardson losing it there. At the other end, A.J. Guyton with a foul. Well, the ability of players to respond to different looks, holes in the zone, it's so essential. Right here, the cut, and now either a pass or a finish as the zone never recovers. No weak side movement to the lane. Luke playing solid. He made the three that time with a gut cut and then the finish. Eric Harris to the line. Some people feel he's one of the best one on one defenders in all of college basketball. Well, out of the Bronx, a good little schoolyard basketball. Gary DeCesar, the coach there, a wonderful one. program. A leadership uh, ability, I think, to get these guys in the right spots. The difficulty, as I see it now, is we're going to get Sam his shots. And that's what Bobby Jones has to figure out between now and the start of the second half. Well, when Sam was injured in the middle of that 20-point scoring streak we talked about, had a bad back, missed a couple of games, it was Eric Harris that stepped up and picked up the offensive slack. And by the way, those were the first two Minnesota free throws of this game. And they go man-to-man -man right now to get back in. Not a bad move by Bobby Jones. Nobody went for the ball. Oh, they give it. Now they go to Gladness. Lewis with a pretty good effort to come up with that one. Gladness is second. So every time it appears Minnesota's about to fall way behind, they'll do something to recover. Now they get possession after the free throws. Only 16 fouls on Indiana, so no free ones yet for the Gophers in the bonus. I was impressed yesterday at practice. Uh, watching him break down and the continual motion, Bob Knight that is, in their preparation for Minnesota. I mean, in command, knowing exactly what he wanted done, who he had to pick at a little to get him forward. Gladness being one of those guys, and, and Rector as well, a guy he wanted to move to keep Jacobson and get him tired. He has a little bit. Clark almost walking, carrying that ball on his hip. Jacobson the fade away. How about this guy? Well, he knew, and so did Bobby. You got to get him away from the box. Too much traffic. He can't maneuver. 
Sam's five out of six, and they haven't been easy ones. Jimenez, another three. And that's eight for Luke off the bench. And the sounds of Luke huh? filling it up. They better identify in a man to man. Don't leave him to help. His best game of the year, nine against Evansville when he hit three of six. He may far surpass that. Here's Sandin. He's going to jump around. That might be a little too deep for him. Picked by the Hoosiers. Gophers will get it back with a fresh 35. They call him Slammin' Sam up in Minneapolis. He's been doing it all over the court today. A toughie here, 10 for Sam. The big story here today, Bill, with Clem Haskins being ejected. Well, incredible. What a gentleman, a class act, the goodwill coach, Olympic assistant under Lenny. I mean, just one of those class guys and the frustration being vented that he's no longer a part of this game. And other than a comment or two, it was a quick bang banger. I mean, I did not see anything in the altercation. We can't obviously hear where we're situated, but maybe walk away. That's the one thing I love to see officials do. If you see the one, you know the guys have said, just get out of his way a little bit. And it was a very unusual beginning to this game from the Eight standpoint seven. of yeah. whistles. Eight very one-sided. Shot clock at five. Harris kicks it for Jacobson. This one's well off. Barely got iron, but it got iron, and that keeps it alive for Tarver. Oh, boy, that was a slight scrape. No paint chip on that jumper. But the alert, Tarver, MCI grad, a kid, if he could learn to make a little jump shot, I think he does a lot of little things for this Minnesota team, Bobby and Clem. It's, it's a, a guy that does the dirty work, the post up, the screens, keeps balls alive, outstanding defender. It's just this summer, step up, make that 15 footer, and he's got a game. They like how tough he can be, how aggressive he plays, but he has not had a double-figure game in conference play this year. His best game of the year might have been his opener. Mm -hmm. 12 points and 10 boards in the coach's classic up in Minneapolis against Villanova. But he gets about four rebounds, uh, an assist a game, only two turnovers, which for a guy who touches it inside isn't too bad. Jimenez will bring it up. How about this guy? Three for three from the floor so far for Luke. Nice defense here. They're going to get it on Lewis. Tried. Got the body on Gladness. Gladness brings the shirt down to the side, making sure the officials know. Good, solid performer, too, for Minnesota. Now from the hardwood to the links. Plays that Bill Raftery dreams about. Ooh, what a beautiful, if you've never been there. It's fabulous. And bring the family. It's a little expensive for your taste. but I don't, I don't know about tea times for four, though. Uh, I've been out there during the tournament as well. It's a great extravaganza. I mean, the the uh, Hollywood types as well as the fantastic PGA performers. It's a gorgeous setting. It'll be all captured on the cameras of CBS. That's three for William Gladness off the bench. He's had more rebounds than that. Couple of fouls. He's been a presence early. We're under the three minute mark first half. Here's that box set. Diagonal to the box and then try and redouble here. And they got the post. Good denial by Gladys with that big wingspan. He couldn't stay in bounds, though. Tell you what, that's a good place to make that play right in front of the general. They'll huh? save you, huh? Well, you know, your home team generally will help you unless you're playing his position. But Bob Knight and post defense, just extraordinary. Gladys a little bit late because they automatic switch, but got the hand in. The great effort. Well, I guess that guy doesn't play center. <laughs> Minnesota inbounds it with about 20 on the shot clock. And a double dribble call on Eric Harris. Well, the communication level of Indiana is very important. As they switch inside, you see the taller Gladness with a great effort. Craig Hartman with the pretty good hands. E.J. sort of looking disinterested for his rebounder. Gladness now trying to force a pass around the hip of about two different guys. Ten turnovers by Indiana. Minnesota's given it up 11 times. Sandin way long with the three. Didn't even get any iron. And it's going back the other way. Well, he shoots 33% from three and not a bad touch. Great story. He had those fainting spells. And one of the things I think Clem had to fight through, different guys with health problems. Can they play? Do they have the... Nice little look here. Wow, gladness from a tumbling out of bounds, Michael Lewis. 
Great little kiss delivery. But to finish the thought on Minnesota, I mean, he has to know each game how you feel. He talks to the different yeah. guys, whether they can contribute or they have some physical difficulties. Clark as well. Clark Gladness has really been gambling today, and that time he got the steal. Here's the early push, and let's see if they duck in. It's Rob Turner. Easy pass, Richardson nearly traveled. Scrum on the floor, he's got it back. Good dribble in. Stopped by Sandin. Looks like a blocking foul on number 51. If that's on him, that'll be his third. Ed Hightower was also talking with Quincy Lewis, and it'll be on Quincy. That was a walk in the lane. I mean, that was a, a play that should have been going the other way. And then Indiana, loose balls usually turn it. And Bobby Jones a little upset at the non-walk and then the lack of hustle by his club. Larry Richardson at the line. Pizza Hut scholar athlete for today's game. Kevin Nathaniel of Minnesota. Freshman with a 4-0. And Robbie Eggers of Indiana. He's been an academic All-Big Ten for the past three years. Yeah, he stepped it up a little. Unselfish, confident performer. Chris Winner in the Air Force. I guess it does bring an air of confidence. A little space here. Flair for Sam. 6-5-2-10. I'd like to see him crammed into that cockpit. Wow. Jeez, that was without legs. I mean, that's unbelievable. Jacobson with 13 on the day. He's a mediocre shooter from out there at 31%. Well, they got the Sandin shot. off the floor, and now Bobby Jones is really upset. That'll be Kyle Sandin's third. Well, no players in foul trouble, but coaches are in foul trouble. He better be careful. <laughs> so with a minute 11 before halftime, Sandin, a bad time to pick up his third. They'll get Miles Tarver in there as soon as they can. Larry Richardson goes back to the line. And as you noted, not a great free throw shooter, although there he goes. It's a three for three today. Yeah, he's been solid. Coming off a career high 11 at Michigan State. Bob was working on his offensive game yesterday. 46% coming in, four for four. Not too bad, huh? A bad for a guy getting eight minutes a game. A minute five before halftime. Hoosiers by 17 now. It's been the Sam Jacobson show. Yeah, he's, he knows they need some offense. He's taking over. No inside game right now. Everything deep. Lewis long with the three. Got his own. Hangs. Little contact. He gets it back again. Off the glass. Finally draws the foul. And how hard did he work on that position? He's showing some heart. I mean, Indiana a little slow to the basketball. Quincy defensively is excellent. Here, no, you know right away whether you're making the shot or not. Good effort here to come up with it, and then the activity and the pursuit as well. Good solid job, and Indiana lacking in the foot coverage. Let's see if Eric has enough left to shoot some free throws. He's got to be gassed after that. We talked about Sam Jacobson being hurt. This guy stepped up 19 against Northwestern, then 20 at Penn State in consecutive games. One of the all time best stealers at Minnesota, one of the all time assist guys. This next stop, Bob, I think is big for Minnesota. If they can stop, this would make it 29, this free throw, a stop and a score. And then you've got a little bit something going into the locker room. Got to be solid. Nice offensive rebound here. Tarver underneath. What will for? Ball pulled down by Robbie Eggers, our other academic guy we just talked about. That's one he didn't need, Mike. Got to use his head. Look at the hustle now. Now Lewis over for two on that possession. Here come the Gophers. They've got numbers this time. Jacobson stopped by Jimenez. Now I would hold for one. Just to get yourself back in. Yeah, Bobby Jones up now saying one. Shot clock off. Don't give them a hammer. Got to get it to Sam. Going to dribble, drive, and I think try and hit the fade man. Oh, what a tough mm, Lewis. Play. Quincy Lewis with his third. Mm, does that hurt? Not only the third foul, but the inability to convert. Plus, Indiana gets to the line once again. Two Gophers with three. The big fella, Sandin. And then Quincy Lewis, one of their outstanding shooters and scorers. At the line at the other end, Michael Lewis. 86%, you give him a chance for two automatic. You gotta be alert, push quick, try and get yourself one more. 
Michael five out of six today. Stop the presses. He's missed two in one game. Kevin Clark checks back in. Great push with the dribble. They get another three-point shooter. Archambeau, Bobby Jones doing it all. Well, he's been around Clem long enough. Different personalities on the road. You ever notice with teams you go and see oh, yeah. them? You look at tape, they play well. Timeout now, the 20 variety for Bob Knight. He wants to defend this. And I'm sure you're going to see Kevin Clark or Harris with the dribble push. See if they can either create or find somebody on the wing. They will face guard Sam Jacobson. I'll be shocked if Indiana lets him have a touch. Bobby Jones at the helm with Clem Haskins out of the game. They're going to go into halftime down by a bunch. Billy, they got it back to six at one point. In fact, two different times. At 23-17, then 25-19, they got it back to six. Could not sustain it. I think when Sam Jacobson got tired, so did their offense. And then Luke uh, Jimenez stepped it up. Here come the goals. Harris on Jimenez. Inside the yard. Can't knock it down. Loose ball, and it'll be Indiana by a wide margin at the half. Bob Knight consulting with the trainer, but right now the score in his favor. Tim Bradley and Clark Kellogg along with Penzoil at the half. After this, and a word from your local station. Big time. Straight out to the stats, Mike. <clears throat> okay.
If you take away Sam Jacobson, six out of eight, the Gophers are five out of 20 from the floor. Indiana shooting pretty well, right at 50%, so they've recovered, obviously, from their shooting woes of Wednesday night. Bob Carpenter, Bill Raftery, back in Bloomington. An early blow for the road team. You know, it's tough enough to play on the road in this league without losing your coach four minutes in. Uh, it was, uh, I think, disastrous for this team, getting that composure, being relaxed. And this is when he's been asked to leave. Brent, his son, and it's what we're chatting about, the ties. Mom gets some of the good-looking ties for them. But Brent making sure he doesn't do anything that he'll regret or the program will regret. But what I loved the most was coming back in, getting the composure, and being with his guys. I mean, I know he's disappointed, if if not embarrassed at this point, but just contributing, making sure, and I'm at the half, I'm certain that they discussed some things as well. So a little hand in by the coach, even though he's no longer available. Here's Jacobson. Takes a bump on the way in. Looks like Luke Recker with his second. And communicating now how to play that particular situation. And Bob Knight sitting back, and I think he's enjoying the way they've responded defensively. Jacobson. Great for penetration. Cuts to the glass. 15 for Sam. He's a different guy than early in the year. I just like his personality. He drifted out at the end of the half because he couldn't get the ball down in the box. Back in the 2-3 now, but what penetration. 7 of 9. That was probably his first easy shot of the day as well. Nice look. Good work. Gladness. What a confident rookie, huh? From Michael Lewis. Oh. 7 for Gladness. Who has 4 rebounds to go with it. Nice job off the bench in the first half. Off the dribble. Ooh, great help by Gladness. Eric Harris, stop call. Here comes Lewis. Loose is oh, Ricker. Unselfish. Oh. Gladness again. Well, for some teams, it's sadness for Indiana. It's Gladness. <laughs> One end contributing. The other getting the dive. And then the acknowledgement. And how about the awareness? Mm -hmm. Look at that. Minnesota. More turnovers than field goals right now. Well, just acknowledging them is a very unselfish by Wrecker. Lewis inside the arc. Well long. Wrecker a standing rebound. He'll actually go backwards a bit for A.J. Guy. Hoosiers by 19, 90 seconds out of halftime. That was a good slap away by Eric Harris. We talked about his one-on-one -on -one defense. We saw that quick slap right there, getting nothing but ball. Meet me. They've been able to get to the goals, whether they can convert or not. Nice follow here by Tarver. Off the court miss. Good. Anticipation. I think the one weakness in Indiana is the ability or inability to control the bounce. And right now, Minnesota taking advantage. Wrecker will take it this time. How about this freshman? One time he's open for a three, dishes inside for a couple, then he strokes the three. He's shooting almost 40% out there now. Solid guy, really understands the game. And right now, raising his level with Jacobson, face guarding him. Tarver loses it. Here comes Michael Lewis. Four on two. Guyton. Gladness. Great. That is a classic fast break. Bobby Jones with the timeout. Indiana with a little woo woo in the open floor. Gorgeous looking fast break. Well, if you like fast break basketball, this is a classic. The angle pass to the middle sets it up unselfish and the slide by avoids the charge and smile and happiness for gladness william gladness six points now just in the second half a game total of 11. he's been averaging 12 his last three ball games well the olympics are coming up some of those sports we don't get to see throughout no, the year great really interesting thrilling. And right now, getting back slowly, key, and they give the foul. I'm not so sure it was outside. They get one inside. A little bit of a hold as Tarver made a cut. Patterson was that? Looks like Andre with yeah, his second. Like a mystery job. Get good ones, Andre. Right, and watching Harris. High post Tarver. A little screen away. They want some nice things out of the ball. Here's a double. Get a good open look. Clark strong on the J, and that's a three for Kevin. His first points of the day. 
He averages nine, and he's had some big double-figure games for them in conference play. That's Turner from Guyton. Clark the rebound. Stutter step, finds himself with the left hander. He's got a little bit of a game getting to the rim. I mean, he makes the deep one, sets it up. I'm not sure he had time to hit the clutch on that shift of gears. Again, the ability to get by people, very important. You've got to stop penetration, you've got to have it in your arsenal. Guidance for Patterson. Andre on his way up, couldn't get there quickly enough. Well, Bob Knight's concern was the half-court offense, the ability to adjust, you see no reaction whatsoever on the double screen down. And of course the knockdown gets Minnesota back in this thing. Well, the one thing that can help them is that Indiana turnover total. Hoosiers have coughed it up a dozen times now. Tarver from 18. That's the one he's got to work on. Patterson the outlet. Michael Lewis again. Ball stripped from him cleanly. It'll be Indiana's basketball with 30 on the shot clock. We're 406 out of halftime. Gophers fighting for survival. Hoosiers by 17. There are some interesting people in the world of college basketball. Ryan James, Bill Raftery, one of those young guys. Uh, he's Sam's cousin. His mother, Barbara, was a kidney donor to Sam's mom. Uh, they were sisters. They are sisters, Sharon Jacobson. And just a great story this early in the fall. And uh, they're delighted. Spoke to Sam. He's so much more relaxed. He said, knowing his mother is fine. But just a great love story within a family. Isn't that something? Student manager, his cousin. Well, maybe he'll play next year. Rob Schoenrock's yeah. on the roster. He was a manager last year. A.J. Guyton hanging. Short with it. Backdoor rebound pulled down by Rob Turner. Gladness, the kick for Lewis. Indiana will keep it. I was checking out uh, Ryan's free throw stroke before Not the bad. game. He was standing out there knocking a few down. Well, it's in the jeans, you know. He could probably beat Sam on occasion. <laughs> Uh, they're all a little shell shocked with Clem not being out there. That's gonna, it's, it's almost like being bare. You're not as comfortable as a team. Turner, out of control, lost it right into the hands of Quincy Lewis. He's solid. One year sets. Indiana didn't handle the double earlier. Here's a, a dive to the box for Lewis. Tarver, little give back to Clark. And off balance. Kevin Clark suddenly pops up and scores seven points in a row for Minnesota. Indiana not stopping their offense. They go low. Patterson, good job. Pounded down there, let the big fella get to. He can dominate. He's got to have the disposition to dominate. Six points, three boards on the day with a couple of assists. That's just like he's hurt a little I'm just going to say, but that's what running the floor will do. You get down early, deep. But the defense isn't ready. Good luck. Short. does the same thing, but you've got to catch it. Ball squirted right between his hands. Jacobson again after the miss. The shovel for Tarver. He's waiting for Gladness to commit. William fouls. That'll be his third. Nice job by Sam Drew, the defense. Nice suckage. A little bit of a fumble on the pass to Tarver. Catch and finish quickly. Well, Jacobson will get a breather. I think Bobby Jones thinks with those last two shots being short, maybe Sam could use a breather. Well, Indiana forces you to run up and down the floor. There's a double. They run some nice stuff. And Nathaniel moving side to side, bottom of your screen right now. As Harris goes the other way. Betsy Lewis took a look at his shot clock at the other end while he was receiving that pass. Right now, the clock is at 10. He is great getting to the guard. Oh, blow by! Who's going to start guarding Carroll Clark? Did you feel the steam coming out the rear? Wow. 56 41. And they get Gladness with a push off. I mean, this isn't solid right now by Indiana. Number four. How about this penetration? 
talking about blowing by people. Lewis doesn't get any support. A little slow to recover outside. Actually takes the hit, the little kiss at the end. And right now, Bob Knight knows that's an empty trip. They just gave up, didn't get a shot. Minnesota leads the Big Ten in blocks. Antoine Broxy, one of their shot blockers, has checked in. He's, he's playing Mike, lower right of your screen. I'm sorry, there's a shot of Mike Davis talking to Glad as they had spent a little time discussing yesterday what they wanted him to do. Hansen blocks. Here comes Lewis down the middle, racing away, and he's fouled from behind. When Nathaniel with a giveaway. This is like an Army Air Force kind of a game. But right here, the ability to assist and read. They haven't been able to stop the penetration and get the blocks, but this is a tough giveaway. I mean, there's no way you will be not, not be able to eat dinner with the left hand with that giveaway. Wow. Charlie Miller back in for Indiana. Free throw stroke of Michael Lewis. He's 7 of 9 today. All of his points from the strike. Hoosiers hit 13 out of 15 at Michigan State for tonight. No problem. Field goal shooting. Only 40%, plus they were beaten up on the board. Oh my goodness. Clark again. He was ready to lay it up, and the ball hit off his knee as one of the Hoosiers got in that lane. And Bob Knight up because the defense on the bounce, you got to make the guy turn at least once. Contain, get some support. If they just blow by, it breaks everybody down. The big guy's getting foul trouble. Right up. He's been the best defense. It goes on. Skyton looking right at Harris. The entry for Patterson. Andre doubles up his point total now the last few minutes. He has eight on the day. And Roxy relying on block, shot block. And he's got to get in front of the guy ducking in that low. Hoosiers by 18. Lock with the dribble. Roxy, first touch of the game. Leaves it off for Harris. Pulls up, drills it nicely. Eric Harris with seven today. Oh, they're finding it easier to score. This is the end. They've got their dilemma. Patterson deep. Guyton for three. And he almost got fouled. That was 11 for A.J., his third three of the day. Jay Edwards had 20 straight games in 89 for the Hoosiers with three-pointers. That was the all-time record. But he's at 22 now. Lewis fouled on the way up. It'll be Charlie Miller. And Miller in a bad position there as Lewis got to the rim. Very flexible performer. Can play outside, can post up. Gets himself good offensive rebounding team at times. And I think the frustration particularly for Bob Knight is the defense. And that's been their trademark since he started here. You need to get out and get after you. Now with the running, they're not as good defensively as I think they were a few years ago. Vincey Lewis, 68% at the line. That's his first point of the second half. Indiana will check Robbie Eggers back in. Robbie got a minute in the first half. He gives Andre Patterson a breather. Andre with a couple of late field goals and eight on the day as he sits down. And you mentioned, I think he was hurt as well. He was limping, not as quick getting to the low post. With that little jump hook has been favorable for him. Way short. Nathaniel had a touch. Two golfers went after it. They're lucky to get it back. Clark and Nathaniel both had pieces of that ball. Sam Jacobson will check back in, and this thing is still in it's doubt. Hanging. They're hanging. A long way to go, Bill. 12 12. They check in our shambo. They take out Clark. Jacobson's back in. They're down by 18, but you said it a moment ago. Their offense looks pretty good right now. It's just the trouble with that Patterson duck in. Nice cut. Look at this. Jacobson. A little bit off balance. Somebody might have gotten a foot in his boot there. He got bumped. And then Harris almost got the anticipation steal in the backcourt. And now Luke Brecker comes back for the Hoosiers. Bobby Jones upset because that was an opportunity negated. Sam had gotten the bump. That's almost like a three-point opportunity taken away. Up night, the Babe Ruth of coaching with 714. Ooh, that? He doesn't stay out as late as Babe Ruth. <laughs> that. That's 112 of those here in Bloomington. If you can hit with the red eyes, you can be a heck of a hitter. That's Nathaniel. Jacobson looking to 
someone to flash out. It worked off a pick from the free throw line. Along with it, rebound Charlie Miller of Indiana. I'll tell you this, sir. They got a technical now. I don't blame the coaches. Bill Brown gets one now, not Bobby Jones. But what has happened? The play on Jacobson, and there was just a pick in the lane. That set off the bench. Not a happy atmosphere on the sideline for Minnesota. Do you remember a few years ago the governor was upset at some calls up in, I think it was an Indiana series too. They didn't get their, their fair share. Bobby calmed the bench down and now trying to get a kind ear. It's Tom O'Neill with Bobby Jones. Two free throws by guess who Michael Lewis. And we get a timeout. 11.30 to go. Now they're down by 20. CBS Sports coverage of NCAA basketball continues after this message and a word from your local station. Well, Bob Carpenter, the little things add up. Jacobson earlier had had a little nickel dimer, didn't have it called. Now, just watch this. They're going to run into that screen. If you can read through that, this is a foul on Miller. And that's what upset Bill Brown. It throws off the jump shot, and the bench went wild. So not a pleasant afternoon along the sideline for Minnesota. Guyton for three. Wow, that's some range there. A.J. with his fourth three of the day. He has 14. Back cut. We got Sandin back in there. He flashes out to the high post. Ball deflected. That was Robbie Akers getting a hand on it. Here's Rooker. Tried to dunk it well. <laughs> Indecisive. Oh, guys, take the layup. The big thing, Sandin has a perfect high low at seven feet tall. He telegraphed the pass. You got to get it in there, Kyle. There's a you know, record. A, a hustle little bit call. late. We talked about the aggressiveness on the side. He was busy. He walked Clem to the locker room, Bill. Then he came back, got himself a two. He's in the scorebook. I mean, fun for us, but not for them. I mean, they're as competitive and, uh, as can be. They want their players as competitive as possible. And Bobby's still hanging in there, doing the things that Clem's taught them. Bill Brown, out of Southwest Missouri State. A gentleman by the name of Charlie Spoonauer. So he's got some humor in him. Yeah, that's for sure. Here's the double again. Nice reaction, AJ. They're standing at that high post. Eggers takes it away again. 
three on one to Kenku. On a good feed by Lewis, they can't finish, but Eggers, he gets a chance. Good kick out here. Jenkinson has to wait for this pass. Oh, that was a push by Lewis. Rebound, Charlie Miller. Oh, come on, guys. I, I know it's a, the game's getting out of hand, but you got to blow the whistle. Jump shot, he bellied him out with a push. And then they get the... Uh, tell you, I'm glad I'm out of it. I was never too good on the sideline myself. Kyle Sandin's fourth. He'll sit down. Miles Tarver back for the Gophers. 69-44 Indiana, 10 minutes to go. They felt Eggers had worked hard in practice. And everybody in the building wants him to score. Yeah, give him a few minutes. Walker continues wonderful without the ball. That's why he scores so well. We know he can shoot. Guyton working hard without the ball to create that shot. 16 for AJ. And his number one huh? big time score. Just a sophomore. What a good player he's going to be in this league. Harris stopped. Good help by Eggers. Now Eggers helps out again. Bumps it. No call. Clark. And he's five out of six out of halftime after going 0 for three in the first half. He has a dozen now. Yeah, this is where the wear and tear worked. All the bumps while he was just having a ball out there. AJ Shake. jumping over everybody. Shake bake and deliver. AJ. I mean, he's got the guy in his back pocket right now. You know, his three-point percent is going to be up around 45% when this game's over. There's Eric Harris with nine. I'm amazed how they're able to break through the defense, though. Biggers. Record. Lost it on the way before Tarver ran into him. Numbers. And here's Quincy Lewis. Good into ball. Jacobson. And a foul. Good handle there. Jacobson's hurt too as he goes off. Took a shot in his hand. But he can run. We've seen him play half court. Good finish. Usually the finalizer here. He got hit in the hand as he made that layup. And I was impressed I was able to get out and fill the lane. So much for that hand problem, huh? Yeah, well, I want to dial some Minnesota offense. I'm dialing SAM. <laughs> and he's the full court pressure doing over. Oh. Miller had to get rid of it. He was about to double dribble that ball. They handled the pressure pretty good. He's lucky he got that one back. He would have gotten the hook. I think he found a life spot on the floor. They talk about dead spots. Here's Guyton. Get him out. Finally Come missed. <laughs> Straight ahead to Harris. Look at the Hoosiers get back, though. Good and hustle. A foul. Well, you got to admire Minnesota. Not their best effort. Clem no longer an influence in this game. But the push out. Indiana having trouble one with dribble penetration, two with balance. A little finish here, a chance for three with a little smooch. That wasn't a fast break, that was a fire drill. Eric Harris will try to complete the three point play. Andre Patterson back. Robbie Eggers with some good hustle play, gets a great hand from the crowd. And gives Bob a little pat. Senior out of the Cleveland area, Cuyahoga Falls. Norm Ellenberg has uh, been around for a long time. Enough games in his career. One of the eights. There's Jimenez. The Gophers try to trap all over the place. They're doing a good job. I mean, it's a, it's a pressure where you're trying to create a turnover, but don't give up an easy one. Well, they were on the verge of collapse a few moments ago. Remember, they were down by 23. They got it back to 19. Now it's back to 17. Now, this is the personality. I think that's what Clem brings to this program. They do not pack the tack, and they throw it first to timeout. It's a 20-second timeout called in the back. With 7.46 remaining on a bit of a run now, Minnesota. Busy weekend in college hoops. There's a big battle in the Big Ten tomorrow. A couple of ranked teams will do battle in Iowa City. Cincinnati, they are solid. Good perimeter play. And it was against Cincinnati just before Christmas. And Sam Jacobson kind of busted out of a bit of a scoring slump he was in early. Wasn't shooting the ball that well. Went to Cincinnati, had a 20-point game. 
Yeah. He's been pretty good ever since. Well, Bob, they go man to man off the timeout now. Figuring Bob Knight would run some stuff to counter them. John. Good inside defense by Tarver. Patterson can't get a look. Shot clock at three. Miller loses it, but a foul by Lewis, the reason. And only number four as they try and get back in this game. I mean, that was a pretty good stop going for them. Good solid play by the big guy inside. He's got to keep doing it against Patterson. Bob Knight's team, the victim of a 10-0 run. 17-point game. Hourglass. Minnesota trying desperately to get back into this game late. They just haven't shot the ball well all day, and Indiana really has. And they have given up the advantage inside as well. Billy, I noticed that during that last timeout, Bob Knight, he let his kids go out on the floor by themselves. The five of them huddled and spent most of the time out together without the coach. Yesterday, he said the one thing is focus. They've got to concentrate for extended periods of time. They had this game in good control. Now there's some slippage showing. This is Jimenez at the point. Working out top with Lewis. A whistle down low away from the ball. Nick Archambeau with a little bit of a grab out there. It was Luke who came into the game in the first half that gave them a little bit of a spark with the deep shooting. Speaking of Sparks, Kevin Clark is back. Archambeau gave him a breather. Kevin was saying before the game, coming from JC, it's an adjustment from going up and down to the organized play. Now he's settled in. So he anything to help the club win. Second team All-American last year at Collin County of Kansas. They play some outstanding juco ball out there in the Jayhawk State. Here's the only push again. Here's Clark. And he traveled. That's just a little going to the wall too often. From Bloomington to Pebble Beach, your typical Saturday afternoon trip. From the hardwoods to the beautiful links of Pebble Beach for the Pro-Am, the National Pro-Am coming up next. Tom Lehman on the leaderboard entering today's play. A little try to kick, new clock. Tarver, hey, just take a look at this, Bob. You try to inbound at Lewis's side. Watch the wingspan. It's tough to get good vision on the ball. Ooh, that bounced out of bounds. Wow, that's the size. It just negates seeing people cutting. It almost necessitates having a bigger guy take it out. Quincy Lewis coming back for Minnesota. Placing Kevin Nathaniel. Harris with the dribble penetration. Tarver, the left-hander, just didn't look like he's yeah. worked on that left hand a whole lot there. Yeah, he didn't get any follow-through, so just threw it up. 
once again, he does a great job defensively along Patterson. Andre not getting touches lately. Got him to it. Andre got released, and he's into double figures. Nice touch from the outside. 1182 points, number 26 all time. He's chasing Quinn Buckner to crack the top. Pretty fair play here. Look at him. Has a ring in the NBA. But Tarver over helped instead of staying home with Patterson. They didn't need him. Tarver for Clark. Green well short. Tarver boxed out by Andre Patterson. If you, if you look defensively, there's a lot of things that happen. You see the screen of that little bump. Tarver's got a hand hedge and help. Now he creates the area. Nice space out uh, by Patterson and Tarver. A little bit too late. You got to look real quick and then sprint out and play your guy. And they get the body by Roxy. Antoine, just a freshman. Out of Tampa Bay Tech. They're trying to get him to front and plays aggressively on the defensive box. Now they lost Guyton, but he couldn't knock it down. Then Jacobson boxes out Charlie Miller for the rebound. Running down to the five and a half minute mark. It's got to happen fast and furiously now for the Gophers. There's they, Patterson with a reach in. They don't have an inside game, Bob, to speak of. I mean, guys that can finish down there, so it's cuts through the area or bounces through the area. That time, Sam Jacobson with a good little dash to the middle. <laughs> Sam with 19. His average is 22. The last gopher to lead the Big Ten in scoring was Randy Brewer at 21 a game back in 83. And uh, what, 15 years later, Sam could be the next. I don't know this is fact, but I think Randy's the tallest dairy farmer in America. He has a farm retired up there. What a program over the years. Think of Lou Hudson, Jim Brewer, Kevin McHale, Michael Thompson, Ray Williams. And Extraordinary level. Jacobson gets it back after the tip. That would have made things yeah. a little interesting. Well, they, they were shocked, I think, and Indiana did not respond to give him that look. It could have been back to 15 if he knocks that one down. You're looking for good cuts. Use a little clock, but within the offensive philosophy. Nice curl. In the corner, Patterson from Lewis. Wrecker skying, but Jacobson brings it down. Oh, he had. He didn't give early enough. He does get the foul. Yeah, he does. That's part of it. Hey, ref, you know, I know you're a big golf fan. Did you know that some of the biggest hitters in golf are out there <laughs> for the Pro-Am? How about that? <laughs> oh, they're nice. Well, that will sort of set the tone for the viewers, though. What a great afternoon. Watch the best in one of the most gorgeous of setting. Lance Barrow producing. You trying to get on the golf crew now, too? Well, uh, thought it occurred. <laughs> I know Jim Nance loves that anchor seat out there. You can't blame him. Jacobson still looking for 20. Finally got it. 4.56 remaining. Indiana by 17. Kevin Nathaniel checks back in for the Gophers. A nice little move. They're doing a little offense, defense. Give Jacobson a, a blow. Pretty good rebound for the guard, I'll tell you that. Charlie Miller to record. Stumbles over the timeline. Good spin out, too. Knowing he had room on that sideline. Into the hands of A.J. Guyton. Gambling for the steal was Lewis. This is Michael Lewis. You can see his confidence developing. I mean, into that lane, looking to create, maybe take the shot. Good poise. Wrecker knocks it down. The Minnesota bench was hollering three seconds. Now for Patterson down in the low area, but nice little spin out and the knockdown. Nice cut. Oh. Carver back to Harris. Takes a bump on the way up. Looks like Ed Hightower is looking at Andre Patterson. That will be his fourth. That ball went to the box. Everybody's head turned. They dive to the goal. That's not good defense for Bob's guys. And that's what they pride themselves in being organized, seeing the ball and the man, and not the kind of giveaway in the man-to-man -man that you're used to seeing. Jacobson at the scorer's table as Eric Harris drops his 15th of the day. Eric's had a big second half, 10 of those 15. 
Jacobson with 20. Looks like he'll replace the shooter. Well, you mentioned that bad back. That's it's amazing he's able to recover and get back in the flow. Real it's, solid nights the last couple of weeks. Yeah, and he's not a stand-around guy. He's a very active player. He's got an NBA body, though, doesn't he? Yeah, a physical, a presence. They list him at 6'6", 210. Very strong, up and down. And he, if he continues to shoot the ball, that's something that's been lacking at all levels. It's a big upside. Running down to the 405 mark. Hoosiers trying to go 6-3 and three in the Big Ten. It would be their 15th win of the year. And Bob, look at Tarver defensively. I mean, here he helps. Now he gets back. He's got great footwork in the low post area. See him? Three-quarter. Now he steps in front. Lewis, the kick for Wrecker. Rims out. Let's see what the Gophers can do with it. Clark for Lewis. For three. Well off to the right, but Tarver pulls it down. And in his way was Michael Lewis. Pretty good effort. I mean, that's an area where you go out of your space to get the rebound. That was important. Well, was very active, going five feet to make sure he got it. Well, now, Bobby Jones knows this is time to score some points with that clock not moving. It's sitting on 338. Well, he's done a nice job. Good composure. And pushing the buttons the right way. Getting guys the blows they need. Just in such a deep hole. Very tough particularly on the road to overcome. The closest they were was five points down. That's when Clem was ejected. It was nine to four. Four minutes, one second into the game. And Indiana moved out to an 11 point lead. Up by 17 at the half. Well, they come in here, Indiana upset. And not, not so much, Bob felt Michigan State's terrific, but he didn't feel they played as well as he would like. 15-point game, 3.38 to go. Gophers trying to hang around. CBS Sports coverage of the road to the Final Four is sponsored by Pennzoil, specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Denerex, the serious dandruff shampoo. And by Right Guard Clear Stick and Clear Gel. Let's go! Bob Carpenter, Bill Raftery back here Let's in Bloomington. Go. CBS Sports Line stat of the game. This Technical foul. It's the first. Hmm. That that's ever been used. There's two for Clem and then one on the bench. CBS.sportsline.com, your address for the latest player stats and team stats for every Division I school. Under the 330 mark. Right up, guys. AJ Guyton handles it. He's had a big scoring day. They go for the double at midcourt. He calls the timeout. Nice little ploy there. Dribble away. Come back on the Bob wants them to post up. That hasn't been seen all game. That's what happens to players. If they don't see it, they're going to go to a full timeout here. If they don't see it all game. They're not prepared. They don't assist. They've been running their offense easily. At that time, nice little move by Bobby Jones. Bob Knight says, I said 20. And he, he had one remaining. Boy, I wouldn't want to give him dinner late. <laughs> <laughs> well, the magnificent set. Don't forget, Pebble Beach Pro-Am Golf is next. And Michigan in Michigan, Iowa among the Big Ten menu on CBS tomorrow. Right up. Ooh, 
Ooh, just got the hand in, Lewis. Quincy, see that. I've got him for five with that one. Yeah, he's upset too. He had the lead hand out there. Sometimes you forget you're dragging the other one. Quincy Lewis falls out with eight points, 11 rebounds, and four assists. Last year they had him dubbed instant offense. This year a starter. You mentioned the ankle sprains. Hasn't been an easy year for him. But a solid kind of a player. I think the key for this team is somebody inside has to ring the bell a little bit. A presence just to take the heat off the guys on the perimeter. I know you're one of those let's even it out kind of guys. This will be Indiana's first free throw of the second half, Bill. You think that uh, you're not being fair. <laughs> you don't think they look at the sheet. It was all Indiana in free throws in the first half. Minnesota played good, solid defense and didn't foul. None of the silly nickel dime jobs. Indiana, 13 of 18 for the line in the first half. Minnesota had four out of six. Here's Jacobson over Patterson, Ooh. using the glass. The Boy, does he have some hops. He elevated big time over the closeout by Patterson. Yeah, Andre at 6 8, not even a factor on that play. 79 65 as the clock moves under three minutes on this possession that sees Sam Jacobson get foul number two. A little small change out from the goal. Bobby Jones, Western Kentucky, class of 84 for Clem Haskins. Bob, you've got to figure they were shell shocked when you think of it. I mean, you come in here, everything, all the game preparation, uh, everything in the locker room set to go over the scouting report doing their boards and bang uh, the big guy eliminated Bobby I think has measured up to the task 11 for 14 from the line today for Michael Lewis he doesn't let them go away I mean that's a nice solid contribution by the mentor Archambault penetrating took a hit Looked like Wrecker reaching in might have been Lewis It'll be Michael Lewis with his second. To the table goes Kevin Nathaniel of Minnesota. He's been shuttling in for defense. Yeah, I, I love Wrecker with night. He looks him right in the eye, having a little dialogue. And I, I love that in the kid. I mean, yes, coach, what do you want me to do? Well, he's been looking Bob Knight in the eye for a number of years. He committed to Indiana after his sophomore year in high school. Now, most coaches will say, who are you? Well, I guess he looked him in the eye in the incorrect way. No, just a little sub. Well, it's such an institution here, the state of Indiana. You read the, the local papers. I mean, they just love their basketball. Yeah. Kids watch the big red machine here. And make no doubt about it, the fans here enjoy watching Bob Knight get in the face of a player to teach and admonish. Mm -hmm. Well, we're disappointed there's not a little action over there. <laughs> and, and as I said a couple of weeks ago here with Sean McDonough, I mean, there are a lot of guys that are very aggressive with their players, and that's accepted by the players, and yet others do get offended. And if you can stick it out for four years, oh, the best. you're much better yeah, for I mean, it. Quinn, you mentioned before, you know, just guys that keep contributing to society. Landon Turner, another guy that had that terrible accident. He was uh, Ron Felling looking on here as he's teaching. I mean, this guy, early in the morning, and this is all coaches, by the way, but the tape and going over it, he lives and dies the sport. And Landon Turner, who had that terrible injury, he made sure he got through school. Saw him here earlier during the day. It's not all what you hear. What time? Michael Lewis looking for a new career high in free throws here. So 13 is the lucky number. 83 67 Indiana. 2.15 to go. Up next for the Hoosiers, Penn State here Wednesday. But there are already some folks around here thinking about that game up in West Lafayette on February 12th. Hoosiers beat Purdue on this floor. 94-88. That'll be a heck of a rematch. I know G. Katie's looking forward to it as well. <laughs> They're a solid team playing well again. Got their feet under them. Don't forget the Pebble Beach National Pro-Am coming up. As soon as we sign off here, we're sending you out to the beautiful links along the Pacific. Eric Harris with 17, 12 of those since halftime. 
and he's been perfect at the line today, trying to make this seven of seven. Eighteen for Harris today. Full court pressure. Michael Lewis almost better make the pass before you come in bounds. Jimenez has it tipped away. That was Eric Harris getting a piece of it. Guyton fights off the trap. When you're in traffic, you've got to protect the drill. Nice step through by Lewis. They get the foul. And it'll be on Eric Harris, his second. Sam Jacobson of Minnesota with 22 today. A.J. Guyton of Indiana with 19. Our Chevrolet most valuable players of the game. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. And, and Guyton with the six assists and the ability from deep shooting 50%. Pretty good step out game by him. Michael Lewis, 15 points all from the line today. Don't ever play him in a game of horse. Harris drains the three. 21 for him. Minnesota calls the timeout with a minute 49 remaining. And it's a five possession game right now with that three pointer. Oh, you got to be kidding. <laughs> That's a lot of possession. Well, you're good at math. I mean, what if they get a three here and a two there? Uh, but Tarver. Nice gamble. Sure was. Good speed. Came from the half court line. No quit in these Gophers. 120 remaining. Indiana by 13. A bit up by 24, 27 in this game. And they got a block here on Clark. And nobody got free there. You got to sprint to get free. Got to help the inbound passer. Can't count the change. A.J. Guyton will go to the line now. Robbie Eggers will get another chance for some playing time here. Guyton with 20. Andre Patterson, 10 points today with six rebounds. And a block, couple of assists. Their ultimate fate, this team, might rest on his shoulders when the month of March arrives. They're so good on the perimeter. Mm -hmm. Do they have the inside game to go with it? Well, that's, that's the story. I think uh, you get to tournament time, you've got to get easy shots and go to as they use the timeout. Good solid job by Bobby Jones. I mean, Clem, I know, will be extremely proud. Crowd not happy. They want to get home from a barbecue or watch the golf on CBS. <laughs> With a minute nine to go, 
Michael Lewis to throw it in. 109 remaining. Hoosiers by 12. Minnesota has shaved 15 points off Indiana's biggest lead of the day. They want the ball in the hands of Lewis so he can shoot free throws. Sam Jacobson on the foul, his third. Using it all, though. Stretch the game out when you're behind. It gives Bob Knight a chance to work on their press offense. They get to hang around home till Wednesday when the Nittany Lions came in. What a stretch, though, for Minnesota. Wednesday at Illinois. Michigan comes to Williams Arena next Saturday. Then they go to Iowa and to Michigan State. So four out of five difficult places to play. What a tough stretch late January into February in the Big Ten. Now, it doesn't get any easier for them. But what you're trying to do, do is continue to develop the attitude and maybe establish something inside. I think Kyle said that has to do some damage inside for them. Well, the two fouls did damage to him today. Two early ones. Jacobson short with a one-hander. Tipped away by Jimenez. Here comes A.J. Getton. The old fashioned to 23. How about that? The old fashioned way, too. I was looking for a little ring tail bang knockdown. Jacobson. Oh. Eric Harris will finish. He has 23, and Minnesota will get some jeers from the crowd as they use that last time out. Uh, Bobby figured I got to talk a little bit, coach a little bit, and get my chance in the sun. Bobby Jones getting his money's worth. Hoosiers by 13. their season high today. They do have a season high in free throws, but don't tell Clem Haskins they've shot 34 today. They've made 26 of them, and it got started early. They were 13 of 18 in the first half. And, and Bob, over the years, they have made more than the opponents shoot consistently. That's been one of their strengths. So they do get to the line. I know Minnesota wouldn't agree with a lot of those calls that got them to the line. Or more importantly, I think Minnesota was upset at the chances that they didn't get to the line when they should have. Archambault fouls Luke Recker on the inbounds play. Does Bobby know the golf is coming up? <laughs> Obviously, he could he could care less. What? You're killing Jim Nance is waiting out there for the throw, Bobby. You got to understand. He's thinking about what he's going to explain to Clem. We, I think he can tell Clem one thing, Coach. We played hard and didn't give up. And hey, Coach, you know what? You can have your job back. It's a little different seven or eight inches away. Wrecker with 13. Final 40 seconds. Harris drills the three. Don't call the timeout, guys. That's another team. 26 for Eric Harris today. Jimenez back from behind by Eric. That'll be his third. It comes with 26.3 seconds to go. Indiana to the line up by 12. Well, the best you can say is they're rehearsing for another game. That's, in essence, why you call a timeout. That's what you say to your players. Compete, play to the end. Uh, folks get unhappy when the giveaways occur, but this is all part of future utilization. Miles Tarver back for Minnesota. Another reminder about the CBS line at the Pebble Beach as soon as this one's over. Jimenez the miss. A three here gets him back to within 10. He'll go the deuce right with Eric Harris, and that's 28 for him. We're going to give it again. Miller the catch. Lewis near side across the timeline. Jimenez capping off a perfect day. Final 10 seconds. Hoosiers are going to go. Six and three in the Big Ten and improved to 15 and six overall. Archambault can't score. Jacobson a touch. Final second. 
he got it away, and it's 95-82, the Indiana final. Clem Haskins ejected from the game four minutes and one second in when Indiana led nine to four. They led by as much as 27 in the last eight minutes of the game. And then the Gophers went on a 10-0 run over a minute 25. And Bill, at least Minnesota, takes some positive things out of this second half. They were in a deep, deep hole. Well, it was difficult without their mentor, no question about it. But I thought they competed. I think Indiana is a solid basketball team that knows how to score. I think the one area for Bob Knight's team to improve is defensively. And that's a funny thing over the years. You never said anything like that. That was the one end they were sound. But they're having some problems with that dribble penetration. That's Bill Rector. I'm Bob Carpenter. Assembly Hall, where the final score is Indiana 95, Minnesota 82. Coming up in a few minutes, we'll send you to Pebble Beach. But first, we're going to go to Timmy Brando in the studio. Hope you enjoyed an afternoon of Big Ten basketball. And this has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the Men's NCAA Basketball Championship. Indiana wins it 95-82, and it's their 15th win of the year. And again, they'll be home to take on Penn State Wednesday. A motorous, murderous road trip continues for Minnesota. Wednesday at Illinois. Saturday, they play host to Michigan. Then they go to Iowa and Michigan State. And Bill Raftery, it's just really difficult to overcome the kind of things they had to deal with here today. Well, Clem, I'm sure, is going to try and establish some inside offense. They haven't been able to convert or get to the free throw line with their big guys. 13 of 18 in the first half for Indiana at the line today. And they beat the Minnesota Golden Gophers by a score of 95-82. Clem Haskins gone early, and we go to the studio. Tim Brando, it's all yours. <laughs>